welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung and let's talk about TCP sockets. What TCP sockets are is a combination of IP addresses and port numbers that will get applications to talk with other computers, so other computers on the internet. So let's say we've got a computer and we could call it your computer right here. So this is PC1, this is you right here. And we've got the internet in between. There's our internet. You've got some type of connection between you and the internet. And then on the other side, we'll make them green. You've got some type of server, desktop computer, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Some type of server out there on the other side of the internet. And of course, he has his connection over there. Now you want to connect to this server. Let's say you want to surf the web. You want to go to, let's say, cnn.com. Okay, so it should be pretty easy. Uh, you, do, you probably do this every day. So on your computer, what's going to happen is your web browser, let's say you're using Firefox, could be Internet Explorer, doesn't really matter. Your web browser says, okay, I want to go to CNN.com. It's going to send a signal down to your TCP IP stack, which is part of the operating system, part of the OS. Okay. And what this is, it's going to make a request. It's going to say, hey, I want to go to CNN.com and I want to use this port number. So it's going to make a packet. And there's going to be different parts of this packet. And we could say right here, somewhere about right here, will be a destination IP. So that destination IP is going to point towards this server over here. And it's going to have a source IP, a destination and source IP. Close to there, there's going to be another part of that packet. We could say right about there, maybe. And it's going to have the destination port. And in our case, it's going to be port 80. And then we're going to have a source port. And the source port really could be any number, almost any number, up to 65,535. And the computer basically picks this out at random. We could call this, let's say, oh, let's make it port 5000 here. Doesn't really matter. Could be 6,000, could be 7,000, 5,001. Doesn't really matter. But what is important is that we have a destination IP, we have a source IP, we have a destination port, and we have a source port. All right, so it's going to send out this packet. So the packet flow went from the Firefox browser. Firefox browser goes to the TCP IP stack of the operating system. So basically it goes to the network portion of the operating system. Then it's going to make a packet saying, hey, I want to get some information from this destination IP. I'm going to slap on my source IP. I'm going to put in a destination port of 80 and I'm going to put a source port of 5000. The reason we have ports is because your computer could be connecting to many other computers on the internet could also be connecting to the same computer it doesn't you know it doesn't really matter but we need some way of distinguishing whether traffic is meant for web whether it's meant for ftp so file transfer protocol smtp pop so your email stuff or if it's meant for let's say something like BitTorrent, right so we need to have different ports to specify multiple applications going to the same computer. So this packet goes to the internet and eventually it's going to hit the other side. And we'll lower this map a little bit. 
So this packet goes to the other side and it's going to hit the server. Now the server, that packet is going to go up the TCP stack, it's going to hit the OS, it's going to go up the TCP IP stack. Now the server could be running Windows, could be running Linux or Unix, doesn't really matter, but it's going to have a TCP IP stack which handles the communication between the Ethernet, the network, the operating system, and then the eventual application. And in this case, the application would probably be Apache. Now, how does the server know that this particular packet is destined for Apache? Because that server could be getting hit by millions of packets per second. How does it know that your particular packet is meant for Apache? Well, it's quite simple. What happens is it's going to pick apart the packet. So arriving at the other side, it's going to look at the IP portion and it's going to say, okay, well, destination IP is me. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to I'm going to accept that destination IP is me and then it's going to look at the port portion. So remember we have a destination port of 80 and it happens to turn out that we were listening on port 80. We only listen on port 80 and so we looked in this packet it said destination port 80 hey, that must be me, that must be for Apache. Now what's going to happen is we're going to talk to Apache, we're going to serve out a web page. In our case, we're going to serve out CNN.com. And then we're going to reply. So this is going to be our reply packet. Comes flying back to us. Of course, this packet's going to look a little bit different. The IP portion is going to be reversed and so in our case the destination is PC1 so it's coming back to me the source is the server IP so destination is PC1 source is the server IP the port it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be simply reversed. So the destination port equals, and let's see what our source port was here, 5,000. So now our destination port, as it comes flying back, is 5,000. Our source port is 80. Okay, destination port is 5000, source port is 80. And as it comes flying back to the PC, so this packet is sent flying back to the PC, PC on its end reads the packet and goes, great, it's meant for me, because the IP portion says destination is me. I'm going to take a look at it. I'm going to start taking a look at it. It's going to look at the port portion. Port portion, destination, 5300, or actually in our case, 5000. And once it decides, okay, well, destination me, port destination, destination port is 5000. It's meant for my Firefox browser. And then it's going to send it all the way up to the browser and that's how we get our web page. So you can see a lot of stuff is going on when we're talking about just a simple application like like World Wide Web, like web browsing. All this stuff has, has to happen in the background, but really it's, it's quite simple. What it is is just simply an IP address connected to a port number and then on the other side, those numbers are flipped around. On the other side, the server knows that the packet is meant for Apache, 
it creates a packet on its side, and then it replies back to me. All right, so that's just with web traffic. Now let's say your computer now also wants to start an FTP session with the same server. Okay, so we're going to talk to CNN again, but we're going to make now an FTP session. Well, it works basically the same way. Our IP addresses are going to work the same. So now we're here, we're dealing with FTP, a very common way of transferring files. So now when our computer makes a packet, our IP portion is going to be the same. That doesn't change. We're going to the same server. IP addresses are the same. But what's going to be different is the port. In our case, the destination port is 21 to start the session. Our source port is going to be different than 5000. And the reason for that is we already have a web session an HTTP session, a port 80 session set up with the other side. So it can't be 5000. It might be something like 5100. That goes over to the other side. On the server side, it's going to look at this packet. It's going to look at the IP address. IP address is going to say, OK, that's meant for me. Life is good. Then it's going to look at the port portion. And it's going to say, now, wait a minute. That computer over there, your computer, is already talking to me. OK, so I see that I've seen that IP. I've been talking to that IP. But this packet looks a little bit different because the destination port is 21, which means it's for FTP. So now we've got Apache up here. The operating system is not going to send it to Apache. It's going to send it to some type of FTP server program. So it's going to go that way instead of going to Apache. That FTP server program is going to work around with that, that packet. It's going to send it back down to the TCP layer, the TCP IP socket, and the network portion of the operating system. And it's going to create a reply. And as you guessed it, it's going to be an IP address portion and a host, a uh, protocol port number. So IP address destination is our PC. Source is our server IP. Now for the port, Port is going to be destination 5100 and our source 21. All right. So it works the same, works very similar, whether you're using a web traffic, whether you're using Firefox, or whether you're using FTP. Now, this information is very important. Knowing how these TCP sockets are set up is very important for you to learn about NAT, network address translation, port address translation, and also how firewalls and access lists work. So a lot of, lot of security stuff. You need to learn how ports work, destination ports and source ports. It's a, it's a very important concept. But as you can see right here, not too difficult. Thanks for watching.